How's it going there, everyone? It's Mr. Zan over here with a brand new Nanatsu no Taizai chapter discussion. And for today's segment, folks, we're going to be discussing about chapter 183, The Danger Zone. And yes, folks, this chapter is utterly amazing because of the fact that we get a certain character who is going to face off against the Ten Commandments. But first, let's get on with the review and discussion of this chapter. The begin at the beginning of this chapter, we it focuses on Meliodas continuing on from the last chapter where Meliodas was trapped in purgatory. And I love how Nakaba was actually giving a giant overview of how purgatory looks. It kind of gives like a like a very vacant and rocky and gloomy like an atmosphere that it's giving off. You know, and it's very it's very spacious and very limitless too at the same time because of the fact that it's in a very circular motion so it, it feels like a t like a long tunnel as you could say when you're looking at this like this picture that Nakaba kind of shows off you're here thinking like where does it end and where does it begin so I love the fact that Nakaba is kind of portraying purgatory itself it's a long tunnel of of just being trapped in an endless void now that's pretty cool in a sense but that's not what this whole chat is about. It mostly focused about how Meliodas was actually trying to figure out his way out of purgatory. But, yes folks, we actually get to learn a little bit more about Meliodas himself. And that is, he's actually free from his curse now. Yes folks, and the reason I say it is because the fact that the only way that he was able to be free from his curse is to die. And yes folks, we it's kind of hilarious the fact that the main character actually has died. The, I love how the author keeps mentioning, you know, yes, Melodas, you have died. You have died now. But now your next mission is to come back to life. But with that next mission, you have someone bigger to face in order for you to come back to life. And that is the Demon King himself, folks. Yes, folks. The Demon King is actually in this chapter. Or more so to say, I would say like a shadowy figurine or, or some sort of effect. Because... When he, this this uh I would say this character or persona they kind of portrayed is the Demon King and and he ha like apparently has like the Eye of Truth that can apparently see uh the, I'm assuming the past, present, and future because of the fact that in he or she knew who when Melodas was gonna die or when it was gonna come come in here again, but I love the fact that when this demon the this I'm gonna say it's the Demon King because to be honest I feel like it really is the Demon King himself in this chapter. The only reason I say it is because when he was when he was talking to Meliodas, he was saying he was saying that to Meliodas that in order for him to come back to life, so we're assuming the Demon King is dead because of the conversation they had with Meliodas. For in order for him to come back to life, he has to drain, I would say, all the emotions away from Meliodas himself in order for him to come back. So which kind of explains to kind of goes more along the lines to say that. Are Meliodas and the Demon King one entity in itself? Because of the fact that each of them are trying to fight over them oneself. And it seems to me that Meliodas is actually winning all the time. So that's what I'm kind of very interested in. The fact that Meliodas may be the Demon King himself, actually. Or his body might be the cataclysm for the Demon King to come back to life. Now that is pretty cool. Nakaba's kind of going... Going with this story mode itself. But the Demon King looks more like a final boss of some sort. Because I'm pretty sure there's nothing stronger than the Demon King himself. Or maybe there might, in the future chapters, they might go along with... I don't know. Uh, with the Goddess Clan. Or maybe the Heaven itself. Because, you know, if there's a Demon World, it's got to be a, a Heaven's World. Or, or a very sacred world. Because, you know, the Druids, they already show the Druids' place. But I believe the Druids worship the, the Goddess Clan, if I remember correctly. But... There's more speculation on this chapter that it's mostly focusing on. But later on in the second half of the chapter, it kind of focused more along the lines as to what the other sins are doing. Yes, folks, I kind of knew the fact that Nakaba was going to finally show what the sins are doing in the following chapter because of the fact that it kind of mostly focused on Meliodas in the previous chapters and what other people... I would say minor characters are kind of going and what other characters are kind of struggling through the entirety of the Dark Britannia. But with this chapter, it focused that the sins are still 
they still hold a grudge against the Ten Commandments because of the fact, you know, they looked up to Meliodas, but so far the only sins that they've shown was Escanar and, and Bon himself. You know, Gil was there, Gil Frost was there, uh, Ga uh, Ga not Gauther himself, I'm not too sure if Gauther was there. They, maybe it might be off panel or something, but I don't think Gauther was there. Um, Slater was there. Uh, I, for, I completely forgot the guy, but the the one that has like the, the little maracas that could like do gravity, that guy was there. I kind of, I always found that character hilarious. He, he reminds me of like a Mexican knight. He's got maracas. That's, that's hilarious. I love that character. He's so, he's so funny though. But they showcase all these knights still facing off against the Ten Commandments. And Estorosa is back again. I feel like Estorosa is actually the strongest, the strongest Ten Commandment as himself. Because they finally showed off what his Ten Commandment power is, and it's, uh, I believe, it was charity. Yeah, it was. Ch I believe it was charity, if I remember correctly. And this part basically means that you cannot hold a grudge against him in order in order to win against him. And that shows off because you know he killed off Meliodas, so I'm pretty sure all these knights and the seven that he sins, I'm pretty sure they're gonna hold some kind of anger within themselves in order to fight against Estorosa. So that kind of proved them wrong because. Estorosa was clearly pointing out saying that, you know, you guys can't, you guys can't even uh, fathom what, what kind of anger you guys are holding against me. So it clearly shows that his power was, was overwhelming them. And even Bond himself was actually like, you could tell he was, he was trying to hold himself. But I, I believe so he was retreating as well because of the fact that there's nothing that he can do. And plus, I, I he, he killed Bond like once. Not even, not, he just flexed if I remember correctly back in the previous chapters. But that's crazy how, how, how that happened. But I'm glad to see that we get to see Bond again. I'm glad to see that he's not actually dead or trapped or, or sealed in some kind of enchantment or, or anything of that. But like I said, folks, this chapter was very overwhelming, beautiful, because of the fact that Escanor is in this chapter. Because at the end of this chapter, we get to see Escanor facing off against Estorosa. And yes, folks, when I read that that part of the scene, I rewinded that over and over I, I read that scene like three or five times i swear it was so hilarious and downright justice right there because in the next chapter it's going to be escanor versus estorosa because in this chapter they clearly showed the overwhelming aurora that escanor always shows off but remember when escanor faced off against the ten commandments in back in the in the in the in the festival he didn't really have the power of the sun. Remember, it was nighttime. What he used, he used a fake sun thanks to Gather in order for him to at least get a little bit of power. And that was itself, was pretty cool. And even remember, it was a fake sun. And even using a fake sun, he was still able to damage two of the Ten Commandments to a point that, you know, they are inca incapacitated. But now that the sun is actually out, who, 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 get ready, folks. Hey, praise the sun, folks, because... Escanar is finally gonna join the fight and I can't wait. Yes, folks, I cannot wait until he gets in there to kick some major justice. Yes, folks. And also, I love the fact that the, the little play on dialogue that they use, the puns that they kind of focus on in the chapter itself, was more along the line on the on playing the fact that they, they played on the prideful sin of Escanar. Because when he was facing off uh, face to face, you could like when you're reading that part of the chapter, you're you're just gonna be glued. You're like people will be glued onto that little scene itself because you know how strong Escanar is, but he was not actually intimidated or overwhelmed by Esterosa. And he's and it seems to be and how they kind of mentioned the previous chapters, they're right. The sins are the Ten Commandments weaknesses because Esterosa's power wasn't actually intimidated or actually weakening Escanar. And I love the fact that Escanar didn't even fidge. He actually went up to space eye to eye and told him, you know what, I do not I do not fathom any rage in me because I pity you. I pity you. I when I read that part, oh oh my god, folks. That was just intense. Holy snap. He act like I and the Ten Commandments dialogue was just hilarious. Like, oh, you're such a pri such a prideful person, and it, like, and the comeback of of Escanor was just juicy as well. But that is just my sin. I'm just like, oh, every reader is just gonna be dropping the bomb right there, like dropping the f bomb right there, like, Ooh! 
like so I swear to I swear to God, the chapter like I said at the end of the chapter was a uh, was well worth the the read and wait for these since the last chapter. But yes, folks, a lot has happened in, since Meliodas has died, and I'm assuming the other knights in 736 are also facing off and doing their own thing as well, because not all the Ten Commandments were there. I believe it was like three or four of them. So maybe the other Ten Commandments also facing off against the Seven Deadly Sins. And I'm, now it kind of questions us to who Escanar can actually def you know, what's, what his power of his sin can actually defeat. Because remember, Escanar is strong, but I mean, he cannot even, even I don't think he can take all of them at once. I mean, that's, that's just downright hacks. You know, I believe as Tarasi, they'll probably fight and probably damage himself extraordinarily in the next chapters. But I don't think they're going to kill Estorosa yet. Because he looks like the type that... He looks like he'll be facing off against Meliodas at the end. Because remember, they have like some kind of grudge going on back and forth. But just that we just can't wait to see the, the fight in itself. Escanar versus Estorosa. I just want to see on the Kaaba. He's going to show that. Showcase that fight in the next chapter. Because, you know, you're going to be wondering like... What, what is going on? Are they actually going to lose a Ten Commandment as well? Because the other Ten Commandments are actually kind of intimidated... With Escanar, I wonder, oh wow, you know, Estorosa's power is not actually affecting this character. They actually showed a little, the little sweat drop themselves, like, like, as if, wow, who is going to be doing this? Who's going to be facing off? But like I said, folks, let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this chapter. What are your theories and speculations on the Demon King himself? Because I personally think the Demon King himself may be Meliodas himself, or they could be two sides of the same coin. Because remember, Meliodas has died multiple, multiple, multiple times. So maybe he has to have at least fought the Demon King and won him over. Or where is the Demon King's body in itself too? Because the way they showcased the Demon King in this chapter, it was more of a of a blurred, uh, blurred like I was not a blurred, but like like a faded, a faded vision of it of some sort. Like as if his body is like half half of it there, but the other half is somewhere else. So where is the body of the Demon King himself? Is it, like I said, is it Meliodas himself? Is he the cataclyst of the Demon King? But like I said, folks, let me know down in the comments section what you guys thought about this beautiful chapter. Like I said, I'm, I'm, a, I'm in love with Natsuno no Taizai. I love the Taizai action. I'm going to bring that Taizai goodness every week in itself. But like I said, folks, if you guys enjoyed, enjoyed my content, give a like, comment, and subscribe. But this is Mr. Zen. Giving you guys having a wonderful day for itself. Happy Monday, folks. Again, have, have a happy Monday. But this is Mr. Zen, signing out.